Hey everyone, I want to show you guys some really cool tricks that I use to program the Titan 600M in Mastercam. Anyone can make a part, but how you make it is much more important. In this part, we faced it, just went 9,000 RPM at 100 inches a minute a zigzag pattern over the top of the material so that way we could have that nice flat surface to start with. Once I did that, I then created a stock model. This is really important for my dynamic OptiRest. This is one of my favorite tool paths in Mastercam 2021, mainly because it uses the stock material where you can go through and actually configure the stock any way you want it to get the correct tool path. Some of the things I did was I selected the outside of the part, but I also avoided some of these internal features. So that way I could have more control over my end mill. We have a large boundary selected, so that way my tool has freedom to move around the part. I did go in and skip all pockets and cut those out in a later tool path. We can then come in and carefully helix all of these pockets. This toolpath is almost identical to the other toolpath that I just showed you. But in here, we actually go through and enable pockets. Once all of those are completely roughed out, all we have to do is start finishing. We use this surface high-speed horizontal toolpath so that way we could easily hit all of the flat surfaces on top of this step. In this horizontal toolpath, we did go through and select a boundary along this outside edge, so that way our end mill would not hit any of these islands. I'm using a 25% step over, so that way I can get these small corners. Normally, I would use a 45. For my speeds and feeds, since it is finishing, I'm only gonna go 8,000 RPM at 50 inches a minute. This is so that way I can just have a nice, slow, consistent cut along this whole surface to get that good surface finish that I want. After the top surface has been finished, we can start going in and pocketing. Here, we used a 2D pocket or a 2D standard. For my roughing parameters, I have a 50% step over, so that way I can quickly remove all of the floor material as fast as possible. For my entry motion, I have my helix start just above the rough surface, so that way I can quickly get into the floor pocket. For my linking parameters, just as before, I'm going to define a 100 thou clearance plane, but my retract, feed, and top of stock are going to be under the top surface. I want to make sure that the tool quickly rapids down into this pocket, so that way I don't waste any time when I'm finishing. Now, we need to go ahead and finish the outside of our part. I did this with a surface finish contour, so that way I did not have to select all of these outside chains, and I could simply just use the silhouette of the part for my finishing. For my drive surfaces, we went ahead and just selected the total outside of the part, and my check surfaces are just these inside pockets. I did this so that way the toolpath would recognize that I want to only cut the outside. I did go in and change my depth of cut and force my toolpath to make one plane at negative 1.35. For our next finishing pass, I went ahead and clicked the inside chains so that way I could finish both of these inside pockets. With any 2D contour, you normally have a rough pass and a finish pass. This 
has a gap of five thousandths. So that way we don't really have that much deflection when we're cutting this inside pocket. Once those are done, I'm going to just copy and paste the toolpath that I just made and change my depth and my selection. So that way I can actually go ahead and cut this radius and this shelf. All I really need to do now is start working on some of the other features. For instance, these two holes right here are going to be drilled out with the go drill. In my cut parameters, I am just using a G81 drilling cycle and just drilling all the way through the part. But the most important thing is that I have my through spindle coolant on. We have these little radiuses that we need to 3D surface. For this, I'm going to use a 3D parallel for my cut parameters. I'm going to make sure that my tool path alignment is set to this outside edge, which will give me slices from here over. This is going against the grain or against this feature, which will give me the detail that I want. The next thing that we did was we selected all of the curves in our drive surface. So that way our toolpath knows exactly what to cut. Now this toolpath is actually in the five axis section, but we went ahead and forced the output to be three axis only. This allowed me to have a nice controllable toolpath with some of these five axis features like retract along tool axis. This is a great feature that gives me a lot of control and making sure that my tool doesn't gouge the part. So we've roughed it, we finished it, drilled it, and ball tracked it. Now all we have to do is chamfer it. I did this with one tool path which is our 2D model chamfer toolpath. I went ahead and selected the model and all of the lines that I want cut. My cut parameter, I'm using a chamfer width of zero. Since I've gone ahead and carefully selected all of my contours to be above the top surface. I'm then forcing my bottom offset to be 0.125. So that way I could also get this large chamfer and all of these other small ones as well. The very last thing that we are gonna do is come in and actually do these two key rings on both of these ends. In here, we just used a 2D contour and we selected our one inch diameter key cutter. For my cut parameters, I'm just gonna make sure that my compensation type is set to wear, so that way I can adjust it at the machine. easy program to do in MasterCam 2021. We have more tutorials on our academy. You can go to our website at titansofcnc.com to check them out.